So in today's episode, I'm going to show you what you can expect when replacing the valve cover gaskets on your Subaru and some tips I learned when doing them on my 2008 STI. Remove the battery. Remove the intake. We're also going to loosen the pitch mount located behind the intercooler. You can reach this from the passenger side and using some extensions without removing the intercooler, but it might be easier to just remove the intercooler. FYI, it's kind of annoying to get the intercooler back on. Later on, we're going to lift the engine up to get a little bit more clearance by removing two engine mount nuts and lifting from either the headers, mine are removed for a different project, or the transmission. Once everything is out of the way, including any hoses, we can start on one side and remove the valve cover bolts. It's off. I have no idea how we're going to get it back in, but that is for future Harry to worry about. All right, let's, let's get this done. So what have you learned today, X? <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Also, what might be helpful when you're taking off uh, the valve cover is to kind of get a piece of cardboard and put the uh, bolts that you take out in kind of like the same orientation uh, that you remove them just because they are different sizes. So you want to make sure that you put the right bolt in the right hole when you reassemble it. All right, so we're about to put on the uh, valve cover after replacing the gaskets on the valve cover. And uh, basically, we are going to have to use some gasket maker. So I'm going to leave up on the screen the, uh, according to the service manual where you're supposed to apply this uh, gasket maker you don't have to apply it across the entire thing I know some people like to do that but service manual says you don't have to do that so I'm not gonna do that um, but yeah I'm gonna leave it on the screen just so you can see exactly where you actually need to apply gasket maker All right, the valve cover is in. That actually wasn't too bad. Um, there is gonna be a torquing sequence and I'll go ahead and I'll leave that up on the screen. But yeah, that really wasn't too bad. Again, it really helped uh, when I got the uh, power steering reservoir out of the way and of course using um, just a couple of bungee cords just to keep some wires and hoses and stuff out of the way, but not too bad. All right, so we've done all that we could on this side without having to lift the engine, but now like the space is way too tight on the driver's side, so I need a little bit more leverage. So we're gonna go and try to lift the engine just a little bit to get a little bit more clearance. Uh, so that's gonna basically involve us uh, loosening the nuts for the engine mounts on the bottom of the car, uh, as well as loosening up the pitch mount. So let's get to it. ripped. Safe to say this side was probably the side that was leaking. Also watch out when you're putting back the valve cover with the gasket and make sure that the gasket seats properly. And I mean properly because basically you should be able to see like for example with the Fel Pros that I have it's a blue gasket so you should be able to see the gasket all the way around once it's made it up and bolted in. If you don't see any gasket, then you might have a problem. And luckily for me on the passenger side of valve cover gasket, I noticed that it wasn't showing all the way. And I just sat there for like a few minutes thinking about it. And I was like, Fuck it, let's just go in there, open it back up and double check to make sure everything is good. And luckily I did that because I found out that I actually didn't seat it properly because you know, when you're trying to squeeze the valve cover in between everything, you know, sometimes it just unseats itself. So super glad that I went back and checked my work because yeah, otherwise all that work then would have been leaking right away. All right, sorry about that, camera died, but uh, I got it in, so that's the good news. Yeah, I mean, it's just so tight in there. I really, you know, you really just gotta move all these hoses and, you know, wire harnesses and whatnot out of the way, but it will fit. It will fit. Again, be very careful when you're putting in that you don't disrupt the uh, the gasket. It's really easy to, you know, get caught on the cams or something like that and pull it off. But yeah, do your best, be very careful. And then once it's on, confirm that again, that you can see the gasket visibly from the outside when the valve cover is mated up against the head. 
And if you need to, what kind of helped me was I put a bolt in here just to, you know, kind of keep it where it is. And then I basically got under the car and again, just double checked that the gasket was all around. And if anything, just used a small little screwdriver, pried the valve cover a little bit away from the head and just kind of pushed it in to make sure that it was all seated correctly. But we're good to go. We're just gonna let the uh, RTV dry a little bit before we torque it down a spec. All right, so I wanna give you guys some tips that helped me do the valve cover. I'm gonna be fully honest here. It's, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. Everything is really tight. It all sucks. But hopefully these tips kind of help you make it less sucky. So the first tip is uh, utilize your fingers. The space is really tight in there. So really get yoga-y with your fingers. And that's kind of how, you know, a lot of the valve cover bolts come out. Luckily, they're not really torqued down that much. So, you know, your fingers actually go a long way in helping you out. The second tip is small tools. So I'm talking your quarter inch socket wrenches, your crescent wrenches, as many extensions as you can. The idea is that the space is super tight. So anything to give you an advantage or leverage is definitely gonna help in these situations. Third is more of a warning than a tip, and that is gonna be, you might crack some hoses. There are two hoses that come out of each valve cover, and essentially they're really old sometimes, so they might crack when you're taking them out. So be prepared. It sucks because they're like 30 to $40 each hose, but you know, hopefully try to be as careful as you can. Fourth one is probably gonna be the most important one is make sure the gasket is seated when you put the valve covers on. It's really tight in there, so you're really trying to, you know, move the valve covers through all these like wires and hoses and stuff it's really easy to accidentally unseat the gasket so make sure for example if your gasket's like mine that's like blue make sure that you are able to see that gasket all the way around the valve cover once you mount it back next when it comes to RTV I know a lot of videos and a lot of people out there like to put RTV over and around the entire valve cover according to the factory service manual that is unnecessary like earlier in the video I kind of show you where the factory service manual tells you to put RTV so I'm gonna go with that honestly it makes you know cleaning and doing the valve cover gasket again in the future a lot easier so you don't have to deal with scraping in such a tight spot but to each their own number six when it comes to the driver's side valve cover it's going to be a lot easier to undo the pitch mount and the engine mounts and then lift the engine a little bit just to give you a bit more clearance it's still tight it's still gonna suck but raising the engine does give you a little bit more room and when you're doing this kind of work room is value no matter how small it is and lastly all the valve cover bolts are really not torqued on that much from the factory we're looking at the first factory service manual saying it's about five foot pounds that's not a lot so just snug it and don't try to overdo it. They don't really need super high amounts of torque. But yeah, I hope that video was enjoyable and useful to you for when you got to do your valve cover gaskets. It wasn't a fun experience for me, but I am glad that we got it done. Honestly, I prefer to do the timing belt over this. I mean, you could actually watch that video here, but thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.